Michael Aspel's waiting backstage to spring the surprise of a lifetime. Well, uh, you don't often come backstage with This Is Your Life, and you can see why. But tonight is an exception because the man in question is going to be coming along right through this area shortly. And we want to cover up any clues that will get rid of our special surprise. Now, have a word with our audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Um, when our subject comes on very shortly, I'll have to ask you to be absolutely quiet, because once he does arrive, it's going to get very noisy. Now, he's a, he's a Wolverhampton wanderer. He's a, a black country boy who conquered the world as the lead singer of one of the greatest rock bands Britain's ever produced. Now, we've filmed his arrival already. Now, when he comes out, he's going to come around here, and he's going to pop in just to see what the studio is like. He thinks he's here for a chat show, you see. We shall follow him with our invisible cameras, and then after that he will, he thinks, be interviewed as it happens by the first lady of British television, the fragrant Mrs. Merton. Hello, Michael. <laughs> so kind of you to help with our little subterfuge. I'm so excited, you know, and thrilled to be part of this surprise. I really am. Who is it again? Uh -huh. <laughs> do you know, do you know, if you ever do me on this show, will you tell me in advance so I can get a firm? <laughs> you will be warned. No, you won't be warned. Of course you won't. No. Are you, I'm getting the signal, actually. He, he oh. is about to leave the dressing room. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Yeah. Right, just come this way. Just show you the set before we uh, we start. Okay. If you could just actually stand in the centre there. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Not quite the show you expected. They are here to watch me say to you, Noddy Holder, tonight this is your life. <laughs> My guest is Clavin. <laughs> we're we're going to do the show uh, right here. What we're going to do is transform the set, put some very nice people there, and then we'll rock and roll. See you in a moment, folks. Noddy, come this way. To quote your hit of 1975, how does it feel? It feels very good, actually. I've, I've never been speechless, but tonight, definitely. The leading lights of the Noddy Holder fan club are all present and correct, including Radio 1 DJs Mark Radcliffe and Mark Riley, TV cook Rusty Lee, your mother Leah, your two daughters, Jessie and Cherise, and your partner, Susan. Here is the latest addition to the family, Django. He's almost two. Uh, Susan, the last two weeks have been a bit tricky for you. Uh, just slightly, yes. He tends to notice everything that's going on, so it's very hard to keep a secret. But um, I work with Cherise, so luckily we've been able to cover each other's backs a bit and explain any strange behaviour, which there's been quite a lot of. <laughs> so that all makes sense. And now the television hostess whose invitation lured you here in the first place, she is still here, Mrs Merton, alias Caroline O'Hearn, along with her pal and yours, Craig Cash. <laughs> Caroline, it, it worked. We do actually really do want you on the Mrs. Merton show, because, I mean, some of the old biddies in the audience there, you remember the songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your evening. You are a sweet talker. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> no, no, enjoy. Go and sit down before you say something you regret. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, so far, so good. Yeah. Noddy, it's uh, over 25 years since your first hit, Get Down and Get With It, launched you. Long? Yes, I'd say so. <laughs> That's why you're here. It launched you and Slay to international rock stardom. 16 hits followed in the next five years alone, six of them number ones. They were great days for you, and uh, they were great days for the rest of Slade. Jim Lee, Don Powell, and Dave Hill. <laughs> well, Dave, apart from anything else, you all got to see the world. Yes, we certainly did. Our first trip was to the Bahamas. Uh, we were like four youth centre kids, you know, in a group, and uh, we all travelled to the Bahamas, and we couldn't believe it, actually, because we arrived there, and we were put in a, an expensive hotel, and all our food was paid for, and uh, we just run up bills and everything. The manager, we used to call Dan Darrow, comes along, he said, where's my money, you see? And we said, well, we haven't got any money we're supposed to be paid for. We owed all this money, and then the, the, we just had to stay there to pay this debt off, but, I mean, it was an amazing experience, and we all lived together in this uh, one-room place, and we all learned to put up with each other and not share a room together again. Oh, <laughs> stranded in the Bahamas, very much. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Noddy Holder, or to give you your full designation, Neville John Holder. Correct. This is your life, and it might all have been very different if you hadn't changed your name, because there are not many rock stars called Neville. Your story begins on the 15th of June, 1946. You're born at the family home, 31 and a half, Newhall Street, Coldmore in Walsall. Your late father, Jack, ran a window cleaning business, and your mother, Leah, worked part-time as a school cleaner. There was plenty of music at home. Your father had a good singing voice, and your mother played the violin. Leah, did you call your boy Neville or Noddy? Neville. Neville, of course. Well, Noddy, you were very advanced for your age. You learned to talk before you could walk, and by the time you were 15 months old, you could recite all known nursery rhymes word perfect. Now, you were a bit of an entrepreneur as well, according to your Auntie Elsie. His uncle and I made him a puppet theatre, and he got quite good at it, but he charged all his little friends a penny each to come and see him. And that's the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are when you're about five years old, meeting a mysterious stranger who years later features in one of your hits. Merry Christmas, everybody. When you're 11, you leave Bluecoats Infant School for the T.P. Riley Comprehensive. A year later, your dad lashes out a fiver and buys you a second-hand Spanish guitar. It's money well spent because after lessons from a family friend, you team up with some school pals to play lead guitar in your first group. The rocking phantoms, where are they now? Well, one of the phantoms is about to materialize, Phil Burnell. <laughs> So you were in at the beginning of the career, were you? That's right, Michael, yeah. I think we used to meet up in our school lunch breaks, hadn't we, and do a bit of playing. It's a guy off school as much as well. We did as well. We did. <laughs> Where did you rehearse in those days? Nod's mum's kitchen, our, our mum's living room, anywhere. Sorry about the noise, Mrs. Holder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it paid off in the end. It paid off in the end. Yeah. I think it did. <laughs> Phil, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, even though you're